This is the surface of the moon as seen through a powerful telescope. It's a sight familiar to all of us. Man has long felt a need for a similar perspective of our own planet. But until recently, his concept has been limited by an educated imagination. But now we can look back on our Earth. You are looking down on it from 700 miles in the sky. Your eye for this spectacular view is a 16 millimeter motion picture camera thrust into space by an Air Force Atlas Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. On August 24th, 1959, a camera carrying Atlas missile thundered aloft from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Primarily, the flight was for research and development to further perfect the Atlas missile as a weapon system. But this Atlas had an extra assignment, photograph Earth. To brief you on this historic flight, here is J.R. Dempsey, manager of the Air Force Atlas program for General Dynamics Corporation. Although Convair Astronautics designed the Air Force Atlas primarily as a weapon for national defense, it is now playing a major role in man's search for knowledge about space. The motion pictures of Earth were taken by a camera carried in this capsule. The capsule also contained scientific instruments to gather flight data. The camera carrying capsule was placed into the re-entry vehicle, which was designed to carry a nuclear warhead. Developed by the General Electric Company, the re-entry vehicle can withstand the intense heat generated by aerodynamic friction during its return through the Earth's atmosphere. In a moment, we'll see the motion pictures of Earth taken from space. This is how the mission was accomplished. The Atlas is propelled vertically from its launching pad by liquid propellant rocket engines, which are made by the rocket dying division of North American Aviation. The engine power is roughly equivalent to that generated by eight 880 jet airliners. At launch, Atlas climbs slowly at first, then picks up speed and arcs over into the prescribed trajectory. It continues to accelerate to a tremendous rate, eventually reaching a velocity of about 16,000 miles per hour. After about two and a half minutes of flight, this rear section, which holds the twin-chambered booster engine, is jettisoned. Now Atlas is powered only by its sustainer engine and by these small vernier engines on the sides, which also help to stabilize the missile. At an altitude of about 200 miles, the re-entry vehicle separates from the main body. It was at this point in space that the camera began photographing the Earth below. For this flight, the re-entry vehicle was stabilized automatically so that the rear of the unit pointed towards Earth. As the re-entry vehicle turned slowly in space, the camera followed the arc of the horizon. The camera carrying Atlas re-entry vehicle followed this course down the Atlantic Missile Range. The camera started about here some 200 miles high. At first, it pointed back toward the coast of Florida. As the re-entry vehicle streaked downrange, constantly turning, the camera photographed this ocean area. These islands of Puerto Rico and Hispaniola, and finally, the coast of South America. We made some enlargement from the motion picture film to clarify what you're going to see. First, you'll see the main body of the atlas fall away. You can recognize the eastern seaboard of the United States, the Florida Peninsula, Lake Okeechobee, and Cape Canaveral. Farther along, you see nothing but water, represented by this black area. This white strip is a storm front, which extends northeast across the Atlantic. As the camera continues scanning the globe, we're able to pick out the Caribbean islands of Puerto Rico and Hispaniola. Take a close look at these islands. They'll serve as an excellent reference point when you're watching the film. As the islands pass before the camera on each sweep of the horizon, they will diminish in size as the altitude increases. In the final second of the film, you'll recognize the northeast coast of South America and the Amazon River Delta. Hundreds of miles over the Atlantic Ocean, the re-entry vehicle separates from the Atlas. The camera starts. At the upper left is the body of the missile falling free. Cape Canaveral, where just seconds ago this camera rested atop an atlas, 
is covered by the triangular-shaped cloud layer. Extending downward at bottom right is the eastern seaboard of the United States. As the re-entry vehicle rotates, the camera sweeps out across the Atlantic Ocean. We're now about 250 miles up. The dark areas are water, white patches are clouds. That large white strip of clouds is a storm front. The arc of the horizon at this point is approximately 2,000 miles across. The camera is making a full circular sweep of the horizon every two minutes. We have almost completed the first sweep. We're now at a distance of about 350 miles. The small white spot crossing the screen is the island of Puerto Rico. In a direct line below Puerto Rico is the island of Hispaniola, where the Dominican Republic and Haiti are located. Near the horizon, the north coast of South America. The dark spot jutting into the coast is the Bay of Venezuela. On the second sweep of the camera, Florida can still be seen near the horizon. The re-entry vehicle is still rising and racing southeast at a speed of about 14,000 miles per hour. As we complete the circuit, Puerto Rico and Hispaniola appear once more, this time smaller. This film was obtained over a period of about 10 minutes. The camera made five complete sweeps of the horizon. It weighed only five pounds and carried about 40 feet of film. It measured a compact two and one half by six inches, and it was powered by a 28 volt motor. The film was exposed at a rate of two and one half pictures each second. A 5.3 millimeter wide angle lens with the diaphragm removed was used with a neutral density filter. The shutter speed was one three hundredth of a second. As the re-entry vehicle approaches its apogee, or the highest point of its flight, we are approximately 700 miles high. As we near the end of our space trip, watch the area near the horizon. That body of land coming into view is the mainland of South America. At the lower right, entering the picture as a large, dark section, is the delta of the Amazon River. This is where we've been. To give you a preview of where we're going, here is Mort Rosenbaum, Chief Engineer for Convair Astronautics. As you well know, the exploration of space is no longer just a dream. It has already begun. We have just seen motion pictures that are a part of this beginning. In support of space research, ATLAS has served a purpose above and beyond its normal function. Under the direction of the Air Force's Ballistic Missile Division of the Air Research and Development Command, Atlas was built by Convair and its associate contractors primarily as a weapon. But it is also being used for a great variety of important space missions. This is a Mercury capsule. One day soon, a man will ride in this capsule as an Atlas boosts it into orbit around the world. The capsule's passenger will see much more of our planet than you have seen through the eyes of the camera. This is an advanced two-stage rocket called a Centaur, also under construction at Convair Astronautics. Atlas, again, serves as the main booster. Centaur will combine the developments of the past decade with new developments from the research laboratories. It will serve as a weather and communication satellite, or it will orbit the Earth with television cameras providing a continuous picture of the world's weather situation. It may serve as a relay point in space for worldwide television networks. Another use would be as a navigation satellite by means of which ships at sea could pinpoint their position. Powered by super high energy rocket fuels, Centaur will carry heavy payloads into space, enabling us to look closely at planets about which man has speculated for thousands of years. Mars, Venus, Mercury. At Convair Astronautics, we stand on the threshold of great adventures and exciting discoveries. During the past two years, man has extended his knowledge to the moon. Before long, the search will be extended still further. 
The assignment for tomorrow's space vehicles will be explore the universe.